Hey y'all, it's Heal Heat time. Hi everybody and welcome to Heal Heat. This is our second annual Heal Heat end of the year awards. My name is George Coles. This is my tag team partner, Jay Uso. Us? Oh, I don't think so. Gary loves everybody. <laughs> and we'll start, we'll start right off with a Gary. Since our show has been improved over the year without you being here, we're going to give out the most improved. <laughs> and that goes to our Ring of Honor wrestler, ACH. ACL. No, that's what you and ACL Terror? No, we're not talking about Mysteria. <laughs> oh, okay. ACH. Came in the year, kind of your generic high flyer, ended out the year being potentially a future world champion in Ring of Honor. That's saying a lot with the caliber of wrestlers they have in the company. Exactly. Well, I'll go to the next one. We're going to go the best talker of the year. Your idol, your messiah, Paul Heyman. What can you say? Paul Heyman's obviously sold more pay-per-views by opening his mouth than most wrestlers do by wrestling in the ring. It's true. I mean, it's damn true. In the history of wrestling, I'd say he, of, of managers, He's number two talker behind Bobby Heenan. That's just my personal opinion of the guy. The guy's gold on the mic. And whoever he associates himself with, they elevate up. Except for two people. Well. Some jobber and Ryback. You gotta want it, you gotta want it too. You can't just have, rely on Heyman on your own. You know who really wanted it? Our technician of the year. And that would be Daniel Bryan. What can you say about the guy? This was the year of Brian. I mean, he started off in Team Hell No, was hot and probably the hottest tag team in the beginning of the year. They break up, and he continues on fire all the way through the summer and into the fall. Well, I mean, the guy truly wants to be the best wrestler in the world, and I, I think he is. As far as ability in the ring, I don't think nobody really can touch him. No. Uh, the man is uh, hes a guy that people have said would never be nothing, and he's made he's turned everybody's heads. Exactly. Now, to the worst of the year, George Coles. No, I'm just kidding. You can't. Joseph Parks. I mean, what can you say? The gimmick ran its course over a year ago. It's starting to get a little bit interesting that they're actually going to finally have him as a best, but like like I said, what is, what's it been about? Almost two years they've been running with this, and it's... Well, is he going to like half it, half one side of this, half one side Joseph Parks. I mean, who knows? I don't know. I mean, I liked it last year, but it, like you said, it's ran its course, and it's just dragging and dragging. Exactly. It's a, there's nothing. I don't know. It's just terrible. Well, you know what the best thing from the land of TNA this year was? What's that, George? Coles? Our tag team of the year, Bad Influence. Bad Influence is awesome. I mean, you can mark these guys down pretty much any year. Um, a little stiff competition from Red Dragon. Uh, probably about the only tag team in the world that is even on their level this year with the Briscoes breaking up, Team Hell No breaking up. The Shield, if you want to consider them a tag team, but... Yeah, uh, still, though, I mean, the other ones just don't gel like these guys do. No. Um, you take, a, you know, two seasons veterans, especially in... Two seasons? Uh, two seasons. Two season veterans. Especially uh, Daniels. Daniels is a phenomenal wrestler. He's the guy that TNA should have made a world champion five, ten years ago. I mean, the guy is that good. And you got another guy, Kaz, that's just as good as he is, but not as great of a talker. Hmm. And you can tell by how they work together that they absolutely enjoy exactly what they're doing right now. It reminds you of the old school DX Sean and Hunter. Just having fun playing around with your friends, man. Got to, got to, you know, have fun with that. Now, speak, speaking of fun, this the shocking moment of the year, because shocking can be fun, and it was uh, the Fandango. Well, that's what your girlfriend said uh, when she realized it. I was in bed with her. Uh, uh, she's like, oh my god, I'm an Aphrodite. Anyways. It was a lot more fun <laughs> than or uh, 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 Anyways. That, I mean, who would have known that that would blow up like it did today after no. WrestleMania? Well, it, and all it, the viral videos and all that crap. You, you would look at it as an old school wrestling fan, like this is going to fail. Yeah. And then it shows up at WrestleMania, and it's just like the year before with all the yes chants, that fan dangling really did great. Sadly, though, they didn't find a way to keep it no. going. And the thing is, they forced the, the fan dangling, and they tried to stop the yes chants, and look how strong the yes chants are. Yeah. 
So maybe they should have just tried to stop the Fandango and turned the guy face. You know, there's so many would have and could have. Well, they should have turned him face. That was the thing. They should have made him a face. I mean, it wasn't like he was a well-established heel at that point. Exactly. He was there, what, two months? Not even. But. Now, speaking of someone that's been around a lot longer than two months, our Women's Wrestler of the Year, Gail Kim. As, as good as Daniel Bryan is in the men's division, Gail Kim is in the women's division. Oh, definitely. There's absolutely no one on par with her. You, you know what gets me with, with as good as she is, both times she's been in WWF, WWE, um, they did not know what to do with her. I mean, she walks in, they make her the world champion off the, off the get. But after that, they just turned her into a lackey and well, other things thing. like that. You the know? same thing with Natalia, the same thing with... I mean, they fail on so many levels promoting the divas that they have that are actually good. I mean, uh, they did really good with Beth Phoenix and Trish yeah. Stratus. That's... Yeah, and you're doing okay with AJ. Yeah. At least they're making her a, a solid part of the show. Alright. Now, the best angle of the year... If anything, you're wearing Kurt Angle shirt. Oh, it's real. I keep saying it. It's true. It's damn true. I can't believe you said it. Anyways. Cody Rhodes getting fired. I and thought like, that I thought it did more for Cody Rhodes going forward than it than anything he's done up until that point. This has proved that Cody could potentially be a main event talent. Oh yeah, I mean he's been so close to breaking that glass ceiling on several different occasions, but this year seems like they're really high on him. But uh, we'll see how it goes with the tag match. I could easily see. His brother. Well, I can see, you know, the rumor is they're going to split them up by WrestleMania and have a Mania match. I can see one of the next pay-per-views, the payback or whatever the hell they're calling it this year, um, Cody being the main event against somebody like Randy Orton. You well, know, match him and Orton had for the, the, the Feast or Fire, whatever they called it yeah, that time. Yeah. That was an excellent match. They, I, I mean, I can see him being the main event on one of the lesser shows just to see how it will work out for him. Now, you got the best angle. I got the worst angle. That'd be the continuation of the Aces and Apes. Do you know who I am? The sad thing is, you got such a great talker in Bully Ray, and such good talent at, that they had at one point, like guys like Nux and and um, Doc that. and Mr. Anderson. You know, they they really had the genesis to make a dominant heel faction, but I think they took the masks off too soon. They kept too many, they, the guys they kept around as part of the group were so inept in the ring, no one cared about, I mean, Bischoff and, and um, Briscoe, no one cared about them, no one was scared of them, no. they never were a threat. The Devon was a threat, they let him go. Well, you know, you could uh, mock me for saying this, but I think that well, their first mistake was deal, getting rid of Dilo Brown. You had, you know, the power player in a company that worked for TNA. It could have really helped that storyline out. Um, really, when they did that, I was like, okay, this is going to go nowhere. Because then you have a whole bunch of guys that have a lot of talent but never really had that push. Then you have two jitterbugs that really are only there because of their last name. And the thing, the thing of it is, it's much like the Joseph Park one we mentioned earlier. It just drug on too long. If Aces and Eights would have died out six months earlier, there'd be no problem with it. No. The fact that they kept dragging it out and dragging it out and finally eventually killed it. No, speaking of not dragging things out, but the rivalries. That's our be the best rivalry of the year. And like a lot of rivalries before have drug out. But this rivalry here just was the best part of the year. And that's the Punk and Heyman rivalry. Well, the thing is they kept it fresh. They kept... They, they had, had slow, different players to it. They had the slow burn with Heyman slowly turning on CM Punk when Punk didn't need him after he went face. Then you had Punk versus Lesnar, Punk versus Axel, Punk versus Ryback, Punk versus Ryback and Axel, Punk, Punk versus Ryback and Heyman. They did so many things with it. So many. There's so much of those moments that are going to go on the highlight reels forever. Paul Heyman, Kingman. Punk in the chest telling him I love you, you know, that you were my favorite, all that good stuff, we were best friends. Heyman on top of the cage with Punk bashing him with the Singapore cane. I mean, there's so much little moments that are going to go into 
when, you know, five years, ten years from now, when we see highlights of this era, you're going to see these moments come out. Yeah, it, it was really a good time in wrestling. You know, you get tired of the John Cena, you can't see me's and all this stuff. You can't see me? Exactly. And, you know, even with, with the with Punk's title run, a lot of people complained that, you know, that he lost it to Rock. I, who better to lose it to, really, if you think about it? Can you? <laughs> But you get what I'm saying. He's already beat Cena before. He's already beat everybody else. He had to beat a name brand or a, someone with a name had to beat him. Kenya. Well, I don't think Kenya's beating nobody right now. So, all right. Digest this. Anyway, uh, coming off of that, our match of the year actually was part of this feud: CM Punk versus Brock Lesnar at SummerSlam. I thought this. I mean, this to me topped Punk versus Undertaker. It topped. The SummerSlam main event, which was uh, Brian and Cena, which was re very good itself. Um, you know, TNA, I think they really didn't have a great Quality match. match like that, no. They didn't have an iconic match this year. Uh, Ring of Honor struggled a bit. Their, their Scum versus ROH blow-off match was pretty good. Uh, Steam versus Jay Briscoe was good, but this... This probably was the best match by far. And in a year that Punk versus Undertaker, with all the personal animosity that they had going into it, gets topped by Punk versus Brock Lesnar, that's saying something. I mean, people say Lesnar doesn't have the passion for the business, but then you see when he puts a match out like this. And, and the thing is, Punk was willing to just take an ass beat in front of him. Oh, and they did. I mean, they both did. They beat the piss out of each other. And it was, you know, it was just a match that just kept you on the tip of your seat because you didn't know who was going to win. Exactly, and that's how it should be. Now, coming off of that, our wrestler of the year, Drumroll Gary. That was the worst drum roll ever. That's terrible. That's just terrible. All right, Cleveland. No, that was more Charles Barkley. That's just terrible. Anyway. That's just terrible. Why did I invite you? Just because it's the end of the year show, i got to bring you on this one. Anyway. You're welcome. Our wrestler of the year, the Shocker. If anybody doesn't know this one already, you should stop watching wrestling. Daniel Bryan. No one was hotter this year. Daniel Bryan? Two-time world champion. Even though they took him right both away. Neither run lasted more than an hour and a day. But... The most over-wrestler, I, I would say he gets a better reaction than any wrestler that I've seen in my 30 years of watching wrestling. Steve Austin and the Road Warriors included. I don't want to go that, that far, but in present day, he's the man. I mean, I'm, you know, I, I, I'm an Austin fan, man, and I, you know, I'll admit. The one difference between CM Punk and Daniel Bryan is Daniel Bryan has a fan base that's universal. Mm -hmm. He's kind of, he compares, and, and I hate to say this because you're going to think it's because of who he is, but Mick Foley. Mick Foley was someone that everybody loved. Mm -hmm. Whereas you had Steve Austin who was more of the, the adult male demographic. Where CM Punk goes for that same demographic. Not that there's anything wrong with that. But Daniel Bryan's the crossover. You got the kids love him, the ladies love him. But the men love him. The total divas is making all the women love him because he's freaking the perfect boyfriend on there. I tell you what, when they had that match on Mania, the him and uh, Tyson Kidd, that was probably the one of the most entertaining. Tyson Kidd. Tyson Kidd and him had that match on Mania. Remember the Saturday morning sh uh, shows? Oh, um, and you, you know mean, they had you mean the Saturday morning slam. Was it Saturday morning slam? Yeah. I thought. Was, anyways, but anyways, that match that they had was such a great match and I was like like you just said kids love them that was a kid friendly match you can't find a match that wasn't and the thing of it is you could put him in the ring with anybody on the roster and he's going to have a five star match anywhere from Brodus Clay to the Wyatt family I mean he's making the Wyatt family look like they belong in the main event not that they don't but without a without a good antagonist like Brian they wouldn't look as good as exactly him. Kind of like how you look better sitting next to me because I'm a great. Well, oh, any chick looks better. It's like the any the chick, chick better. does look better. Well, anyways, the, the chick thing. Any chick looks better when she's next to another chick that's 
Yeah, had a few you, you see how he's talking he's a chicken. No, oh, sir. But basically, that's you all you're going to say to a nine when you're next to a one. You have a great day, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> but basically, that's all I got. Is there anything you want to add, Gary? That's it for me. Well, my name is George Coles, and this is my bottom bitch, Gary Rhodes. Butter's bottom bitch. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> this, uh, this has been our Heel Heat second annual award show.